long ago, a railway called Soda from the North Western Railway was made up of smaller private railways in branch line. Now the chimney from Marum was one such branch line. During the run of this branch line, it was kept separate from the Vixen Railway by a large shaft where the viaduct now spans between Marum and Crunk. The line continued on for a while after Marum to allow engines to run their trains out of the way and to shunt their cars out of the way. Now he's the rails ran all the way to the chat and ended up set of buffers. It was run by three engines. One of them was named Muth. From what the other engines told about it, he was old but a kind engine. He is white paint with a number zero on his side. He was a hard worker, although he could be prone to lowers in his temper. Something didn't go right, upset him personally. One day, the old controller came and spoke to him. To Mothy, the railway doesn't have enough work for you, he said, so I'll be placed here in the shed until further notice, to Mothy asked. No, said the old controller, business doesn't seem like it will pick up in the near future, so rather than being stored here in the shed, you'll be sold for scrap end of the week. Timothy gasped when he heard that, but sir, he begged, I can't be sold for scrap. I'm sure business will pick up soon. Could I not be loaned to another railway that needs another engine, or I'll be placed here until that time. I'm sorry, Timothy, replied the old controller. There's nothing I can do, because there is no other work on any of the branch lines for you, and it would cause too much to ship you to England where work might be plentiful or keep you maintained to wait for business to pick up. It would be cheaper to scrap you. And so the old controller walked away. Timothy stayed silent, but he felt anger that he was going to be scrapped. He'd worked so hard all life, and now the old controller was scrapping him just to save money. He might be old, but he didn't feel his time was up at all. He began to think about how he can get back at the man. Then he came with a plan. A very deadly plan. The night before he was to be sold for scrap, Timothy was to take a late night train from the docks at Knapford to Marin. Before he left, he spoke to the other engines, who were not pleased to hear about his unfortunate fate. But Timothy was oddly calm about the whole ordeal. It's okay, he said. Every engine's time comes, and unfortunately, it's my time now. After this run, I shall go and head to the scrap yards, where I shall accept my fate. And with that, he left for the docks, much to the confusion of the other engines. He arrived at the docks right on time. He coupled up to the coaches, and similar to other passengers got on board. Once the last door closed, the guard waved his green flag, and his driver called out. Full steam ahead to Mothy. Sure thing, Timothy called back. And they set off down the line. Timothy was enjoying himself. The coaches ran smoothly and clattered quietly behind as he puffed along the quiet countryside. As Timothy approached Wellsworth, the driver began to put on his brakes. But instead of coasting to a stop, Timothy kept going. Timothy, what are you doing? Called his driver. But Timothy didn't say anything. He concentrated on his plan and began to move faster and faster. He was going so fast he charged up Gordon's hill without slowing down. Coaches rattled and shuddered as he raced on. The guard applied the brakes, but Timothy kept going. As 
man came into view, the driver of the fire knew what he was going to ahead of him, so they called out one last time, Tumultic, stop, we're gonna kill us all, screamed his driver and fireman. But Tumulty still begged to respond, the driver and fireman tried all they could to let off steam, but nothing worked. As they neared the chasm, Tumulty's safety valve opened, letting off a loud shriek before it was drowned out by the sound of the crashing cries of the passengers. Tumulty and his train crashed through the blockade and plunged into the rain. To this day, no one knows what caused Tumulty to carry out this horrific murder-suicide. Some say he went mentally insane, but others claim he was possessed. And nowadays, the construction of the viaduct was commenced. However, they had a whistle last night. And every year on the date of the accident, it runs again as a warning to others. Plunging into the gap, shrieking like a lost soul. And that's a story for another time.